Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, it's the International Space Station. Uh, loud and clear, we're ready for the event. Canadian National Film Board Space School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Ramona Jenix, Minister of Education and Early Childhood Development in Nova Scotia. How do you hear me? Ma'am, I may read you loud and clear. It's a pleasure to have uh, you and everyone who's gathered there today and the National Film Board here with us on board the International Space Station. Hi, Chris. It's a pleasure to speak with you again. I've been following your mission and have been enjoying all your breathtaking pictures and great videos on your Twitter account. I'm particularly happy to be here today to highlight this great new interactive website designed by the National Film Board of Canada in collaboration with the Canadian Space Agency for Young Canadians. And oh, by the way, happy Earth Day. Well, happy Earth Day. I brought a small Earth with me as well because it's Earth Day today. And uh, if anything, my, uh, my respect and my uh, concern and my love for the Earth has, uh, has only been deepened by the chance to see it from this perspective. It's, it's an incredible privilege to see this Earth this way, and I'm glad you've had a chance to look at some of the pictures I've been sending down to try and just express our, our sense of uh, stewardship necessary to be occupants of Spaceship Earth. We have students ready to ask you questions. Let me introduce you to Madeline, who is in grade nine. Since you have first been up in space, have you been able to see any visible effects of global warming? Madeline, yes. Um, you know, climate change happens locally and it happens globally. And the places we see it the most are uh, here in southern Russia at um, the Aral Sea. It's dr dried up tremendously. We were watching uh, how the glaciers have been melting down in Patagonia, down in uh, the southern end of uh, South America. And of course, Lake Chad in Central Africa, from the first time I flew back in 1995 till now, has significantly dried up. So yes, uh, as the weather changes around the world, not just with the seasons, but uh, from year to year, you can definitely see it uh, from this global perspective. And it's, it's really just a visual reminder of the necessity to think about what we do as individuals and what we do as communities to, uh, to maintain the health of our own planet. Hello, my name is Liam, and my co I'm in grade nine, and my question is, do you get bored in space? If so, what do you do? You know, I, I, uh, to me, boredom is just mental inactivity, and uh, I, I, I never get bored. There's, there's so many things to do, and this place is so rich with opportunity. If I have 30 seconds, there's always something else to do. And boy, if I have a couple minutes, then I grab my camera and I race over to the windows and try and get a picture of what part of the world is underneath us. Or I go and uh, read what people are sending me on Twitter. Or we have a whole list of job jar experiments to run and do all the time, try and get those done. Or I start making lunch for the other crew members. Or I, uh, you know, contact my family. Or I try and write about what the experience. I have a guitar on board. I play a lot of music and I've written music up here. So uh, I'm never bored. <laughs> There's just so many things to do. Of course, not just here on the station, but on Earth as well, that uh, I'm always looking for more time and not, not more activity. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Anissa. Hello. My name is Anissa. I'm grade 7. And my question is, are you afraid that something bad could happen to the space station? Uh, no. Afraid, no, because it's a great 
chance that it would be very uh, it, it, it wouldn't have nothing would happen in the, to the station and we are prepared for that we have followed uh, a lot of training over many years so my level of preparation to be here in the station is very high so after that we have identified every danger that could happen to the station and we have decided what would we would do if anything happened and with that level the the, the we we were not afraid that something that is going to happen of course we know that there is a little bit of danger but i'm not afraid because i am prepared because i have a plan and nous and we have put it in practice many times with the team. It's the life in the station, but but it's also what happened at home for you uh, on Earth. It's the same idea. We're not afraid. Hello, my name is Simon. Why did you become an astronaut? When it's a very good question, Simon. You become something, of course. As an adult, you become something. And for me, I decided when I was about 10, I decided to become an astronaut because of the impressions I got from the first astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz, and, and it gave me an example, an idea to become something fascinating and interesting for me. And it's a, it's a challenge for you as well. You have to choose. And and, and think about it, choose something, a future, a work, a challenge for yourself. It, for, for me, it's given me an interesting life. At first it was a dream, and now it was a, it is a dream come true. So it is something that you can do as well. Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm with CTV in Halifax. Do I have to give my age? <laughs> I've graduated from school a long time ago, but very fascinated by what you've been doing there. And I was wondering why you decided to make it your personal mission to educate Canadians and the world, especially through social media like Twitter. You're a Twitter star now. Why did you decide to take that on? Heidi, um, my previous two space flights, when we went and helped build the Russian space station Mir, and then exactly 12 years ago today, when I was outside here on spacewalks building Canada Arm 2 on the International Space Station, I came back just trying to tell people how incredibly beautiful the world is and how the uh, absolute favorite astronaut pastime is going to the window and trying to capture the experience, trying to take pictures of just how gorgeous our planet is. Well, this time I have the incredible privilege of time to be able to uh, go to the window, and if I don't get a good picture of it this week, I can try again in a month or when our orbit precesses around. And throughout my entire career, I, I have felt a complete obligation to not keep it to myself. I, I am lucky enough to do this on behalf of literally billions of people. There are only six of us in space, and there are over six billion people on Earth. And so this experience is so rare in the human, uh, in the human milieu that, that I consider it an, a, a vital part of this job to share it. And now with technology, we're not just describing it in words, we're not just taking pictures and showing them months later. NASA and the other partners have built the capability in the station now to be able to real time, like a picture I take this morning, I can go through the pictures, sort them and send them and, and within just a, a short period of time, share those pictures with, as you say now, with, I think we're just about to go through 700,000 people that are watching and looking at every single picture we take. And it's the, it's the beauty of it. It's, it's really uh, the gift of the space station is the chance to be able to see our world from that perspective, to view all of humanity as one group. And especially on Earth Day, that perspective is, is so poignant and so vital. And I just see it as a vital part of being the commander of this ship, of running the experiments on board, but also of sharing the wonder of human exploration with everyone everywhere. Thank 
Cindy Sweeney with the CBC, and I have a question for you from the BBC. Commander Hatfield, many people in the UK have loved looking at your photo tweets from space. We know you've tweeted many uh, direct who have messaged you. What do you make of all the interest from the UK, especially as your an ancestors come from Yorkshire? Yes, on, on my uh, father's side, my, my family's from Yorkshire, and my mother's side, my family's from southern Scotland, so not too far away, and they, on my mother's side came to Canada in the early 1800s, and my dad's side, the early 1900s. So we're not that far removed from that, my particular history. Um, I've lived in, in the UK. Uh, my daughter currently lives in Ireland. Uh, and I just uh, have a, I was raised with a respect for it because it wasn't that many generations ago that my family had come over. And so uh, there's a great strong just personal affinity for that part of the world. Um, it was also so pivotal for a lot of the, the culture that exists around the world. A lot of the societies had a, imported a lot of the culture that was part of, of the UK and Britain long ago. And so it, it's been important for civilization in general for much of the planet. And so I just, uh, I'm very interested in it. I'm a student of history and of the arts. And, and so a lot of it has come from that part of the world. But uh, I was, as you mentioned, I'm very uh, heartened and, and surprised by the great outpouring of interest that has come from there. Uh, it's, it's delightful to be able to see something interesting, to be able to take a picture of it and then have so many other people delight in it, people that, that maybe see something the way they hadn't thought of it before. They see their town or their region or the Isle of Wight or, uh, or some of the, the northern regions or into southern Scotland, and they just they have a perspective on it that maybe didn't exist for them in the regular two-dimensional way that we see things. And, and so it sort of feeds on itself. When I, I post a picture of a place and then all those people respond and want to see it as the seasons change, it's just natural for me to do that. But it's happened all around the world. There's a lot of people in Brazil, uh, a lot of people in Australia, um, people all around the world that are sending notes to me just asking to see what their part of the world looks like uh, from outer space. And it, it's made a really nice interplay for me. It's really made me feel one with so many people all around the world, uh, including the UK, but uh, absolutely more than anywhere else across Canada. Robertson, News 95.7. Uh, you're coming up to the end of your mission. May 13, you're expected to land. How do you feel about that? Oh, lots of different emotions. Of course, I'm excited about the landing. Uh, I've flown twice in space before, but on a shuttle. The shuttle kind of flies its way into the atmosphere and then picks up on wings and, and lands. Um, the Soyuz comes in a little more meteorite-like and then opens with a parachute and we come down and we we sh <laughs> we let the earth know that we're back <laughs> the uh, the soyuz hits with um with uh, definite force when we land and so that whole process of uh, i'm i'm sort of the the pilot roman romanenka is the commander of the soyuz but we fly it together back home we pilot it through the atmosphere and then we all land together so it's it's something i've trained for for years including learning to speak russian so that part of it i'm, I'm really excited about uh, it's made me slightly wistful on board because it's starting to get to, to counting the last number of times I'm going to do something. And so it, I spend more time, I think, even more time at the window just because of the, the magnificent rarity of it and the, the, my desire to make sure that I absorb as much of it as I possibly can. But I very much look forward to getting back, sharing this experience in person with so many people, seeing my family, seeing my friends up close. Um, and bringing this whole experience full circle back to, uh, to really what it's supposed to be. And that is a magnificent human experience of exploration that we then weave into the fabric of everybody's lives. Hi, this is Julia from Global News in Halifax. I can only imagine what you're eating in space. What are you most excited to eat when you get back to Earth? Yeah, the food up here is often just like this, which is a pouch of something. This happens to be green tea, you know, powdered green tea in a bag that we inject hot water into. And a lot of our food is like that. Uh, for lunch, I had uh, soup like this and chicken like this and um, sort of a cottage cheese like this. 
So uh, one of the things I miss is the smell of food. We, you hardly ever open a package here. There's a lot of squeezing. So the rich aroma of a coffee or the smell of something that's, that's in the oven. Um, the textures of food. Not a lot of our food is crunchy and, uh, and has real uh, you know, delight in eating it. Um, and the variety that, that you can get on Earth as well, uh, where if you don't like what's in the fridge, then maybe you can just go get something else or order something. So I'm looking forward to fresh food, to the crunch and the snap of, uh, of, of food of all different variety, and also the, the smell of, of rich coffee and the, uh, and the smell of fresh bread baking, that type of thing. Uh, a more uh, full assault of the senses when I get home. Hi, my name is Umpai. I'm in grade nine, and my question is, what kind of feelings or innovations do you feel when you're in outer space? Well, I feel, um, I feel honored. Like, uh, I don't know if you've ever had this feeling before, but maybe when you get chosen by a group to stand up and give a talk, or, or, or to do something on behalf of a group of people where they're trusting you and they're counting on you to do it right. Um, yes, it's a feeling of responsibility, but at the same time, it's a real feeling of honor that, that you've gotten to a point of life where you're trusted to do this. Um, and so I feel that. Uh, I do feel the responsibility of it, to try and do it right, to, to try and have one perfect day on station where I don't make even one little mistake in any of the procedures. And I, I haven't done that yet. I've been here a hundred and, I don't know, 130 days, and I've yet to have a day where I haven't at least made one little small mistake. Um, I feel constantly delighted. Uh, just, just by the opportunity to, to do this, of course, is, is so much fun to be able to fly and float. Um, but everything you do is you're running experiments on behalf of so many people, people whose, whose whole career and hopes and dreams are in an experiment that you're running on board. Um, delighted to be able to see the world the way we can. Delighted by the way things behave. Just a ball of water is so different up here. Uh, and so it's, that, it's a combination of, of delight and responsibility as well as, as a great fundamental feeling of honor that really dominates my emotions. I, I just love the opportunity to be here and try and do my very best on behalf of so many people. Hey, Chris, it's Jeremy here. We know we only have uh, two more minutes of your time before you have to get back to your busy day. We really appreciate the perspective you've given us today, especially on Earth Day. I'd like to squeeze in one more question from one more student, and then I'll just let you end the event in two minutes. So here we go. Hi, my name's Alexis, and I'm in grade nine. My question is, do you prefer looking at the stars from Earth or outer space? When I'm at my family cottage, one of the things we really like to do is get some deck chairs, some lawn chairs out on a warm summer's evening and stretch out and sit there and everybody lean back and, and look at the sky because it's nice and dark there. There's not a lot of city lights around. And you can start to not only see the stars, but you can see the Milky Way when your eyes get adjusted. And then you can see satellites going over. And you have time. You can sit for 20 minutes and just watch the beauty of the sky and watch shooting stars. So I like watching the sky from Earth. From here, it's, not, it's actually not as good a place to watch the sky because we're inside a laboratory. Uh, it's hard to take the time to let your eyes adjust and really see the sky. And most of our windows face Earth. So the, what space station is good for is looking at Earth. I, I've seen Earth like I've never seen it before, like almost no one has ever seen it before. And this is a wonderful place to see our planet. Uh, but uh, I think from the surface of the planet is a great place to look up. From space station is a great place to look down. But uh, in order to look up and dream and think about all the possibilities that are out there, there's, there's no place like home. There's, there's no place like planet Earth to think about the future and where you might go and where we might have a chance to go in the future. Happy Earth Day, everybody. To the National Film Board, thank you for organizing Space School. It's a wonderful project. Everybody in Halifax, hello and uh, all of my best wishes from the International Space Station. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Canadian Thank Film you. Board.
Space School Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications. 